confused about modes and chord scales? Well, this simple, classic trumpet exercise will not only build your understanding of chord scales and modes, but also build your technique and build your ears. Stay tuned to find out what this exercise is. Hi, I'm Donna from DonnaSchwartzMusic.com, the site to boost your music performance and jazz improvisation skills up to the next level. And for more practical tips to boost your music performance and jazz improvisation, subscribe to my YouTube channel by tapping on that bell right now. Since I put out my last few videos on how to spell chords and basic chord scales that would you, you would use for a basic blues, I've gotten lots of questions from my students with regard to understanding chord scales and modes. And as I was working with one of my private inner circle coaching students, it dawned on me that there's a classic exercise that I've been doing for years, lots of years, that is a perfect example that would help to explain chord scales and modes and would build your technique. Now we would normally practice modes with an exercise like this that you would see in many, many method books. Okay, so what I just played was a classic example that you see in many method books. But let's take that exercise and take the example from the classic trumpet book, trumpet book that I'm going to show you, and let's make this so that you can really build your technique and build your ears. Okay, so step one, take a key you're very comfortable with. It could be your key of C, G, F, doesn't matter, all right? And what you want to do is first play that major scale, play it up and down steady with a metronome, and do it without looking at music, okay? It really should be memorized. So step one, play in a key that you're comfortable with, play that major scale up and down. Step two, we're gonna take that classic exercise. Now you may have played it already in one of your method books, but we're gonna now figure it out by ear. Don't even look at a book, it's a crutch. Don't even look at a book. We're going to figure this out by ear. All right, so for me, I'm going to be in concert C, which is going to be my D. And this exercise, let me, let me, play, through, uh, let me play through the entire exercise again, and then let me explain it, how, how for you to approach it. <laughs> Okay, so what that exercise really is, and I'm just going to say it's my D scale. It's my D scale, and I'm forming a scale on every note of my D scale. So for example, the first part of this, I'm playing the D major scale starting on D. <laughs> the crack in the voice. That's what I'm doing. Okay, so I would suggest you do it in the rhythm that I'm doing right now. You could always vary the rhythms later on. So pause this and what I want you to do is play that scale and again it could be any key you want, whatever key you're comfortable in, but play it in a, that exact same pattern. Now the next thing that I do is I form a scale on the second degree of my D scale or whatever scale you're playing. So I'm going to form a scale on E, but I'm going to follow the key signature of the D, like this. Okay, so work that through, and when you're done with that, come back here, because what we're going to do now is we're going to connect the first part with the second part. So I'm playing the original scale, my D scale, concert C, starting on D, I'm going up and down, and then I'm going to connect to the 
scale starting on E going up and down, up and down, but in the key signature of my D, like this. <laughs> Please keep in mind, use a metronome. You don't have to do this in 16th notes like I am right now. In fact, I'm going to recommend that you do this in either quarter notes or eighth notes at 60 beats per minute. This is not a speed exercise. Remember, this is an exercise to understand um, chord scales and modes and to build your technique and your ears. Now that we've done the first two parts, now we form the scale on the third degree of the original scale. So that's going to be my F sharp. And again, I'm following the key signature of D. Once again, be sure to use a metronome. Go as slow as you need. Now I'm going to add the scale on the fourth degree. So that's going to be my G. But I'm in the key of D. Now I would combine the scales that are on the fourth degree and uh, the third degree and the fourth degree, like this. Next, I'd go back to the beginning and I'd play everything that I've worked on up to this point. So the scale forming on the one, one meaning the first scale degree, scale forming on the second scale degree, on the third scale degree, on the fourth scale degree, like this. Now I would continue on, I'd form a scale off of the fifth degree of the original scale. So it's going to be my A and I would play that up and down and then I would form a scale off of the sixth degree that would be my B and then I would combine those two together and then I would play from the beginning, put it all together and then I would do a scale forming on the seventh scale degree and then I would combine everything together. Now, you're probably wondering, why isn't she labeling each of these scales yet? What's really important, whether it comes to learning music or whether it comes to learning any subject, you have to have some kind of experience with whatever you're learning. A lot of times teachers will use analogies. I use a lot of sports analogies. Um, but what we also need to do as musicians, we really need to hear what we're about to play first. And that is a big, big problem with a lot of beginner books. In fact, a lot of method books. They don't have either, whether it's um, you know, a person playing the example or some kind of backing track for context. So ideally, you want to be hearing these examples first. Get it in your ears. Figure it out on the instrument. All right, and there's a step in between that that I cover with my inner circle coaching students. But get it in your fingers. Um, play it and then label it. If you start out with labeling, it's not going to mean anything, it's not going to stick, and you're going to have more questions in your head. So now that you've worked out this classic example of, I call it a modal scale exercise, um, now we're going to label it. Okay, so when we're starting on the first scale degree and going like this, <laughs> That's your major scale. We call that an Ionian mode. When we form the scale, starting on the second scale degree, like this, that's the Dorian mode. Some people will, will refer to it as a Dorian scale. All right, and you've probably heard of the Dorian mode, especially if you're really into playing uh, traditional jazz, okay? So the Dorian mode is a minor sounding scale. It is not the natural minor. It is a mode. It's the Dorian mode. And it's a series of notes formed on the second scale degree of a major scale. Okay, forming a scale on the third degree of the major scale will sound like this. 
That's going to be called the Phrygian mode. Now, good luck spelling that one. This is also a minor type of sound. Um, it's not used as frequently as the Dorian mode scale, but it is still used. Now we go to the scale formed on the fourth scale degree, sounding like this. That's the Lydian mode. Now that's pretty popular. Um, it sounds like a major scale that you've done wrong, all right? But it's actually a pretty popular mode that we'll use on um, some major, uh, major seven chords. Moving on to the scale formed on the fifth scale degree, and this one you absolutely must know. That's the Mixolydian mode, all right? Along with the Dorian mode, those two modes are the most popular modes that we're going to use in jazz because we use those modes over a minor 2-7 chord, Dorian, and a dominant 7, Mixolydian. We use those types of chord scales. The chord scale that starts on the sixth degree of the initial scale is this. We call that the Aeolian mode. Now this is the natural minor. Okay, so this was my B, all right? Um, and B minor is the relative minor of D major. Uses the same key signature. Okay, so Aeolian mode. Also used in jazz, although believe it or not, not as frequently as the Dorian mode. Finally, the mode that's formed on the seventh scale degree sounds like this. That's called the Locrian mode. Now we do use it in certain situations, usually when you see a minor seven flat five chord. Okay, we use the Locrian mode. Now that I've labeled everything after you've heard me, after you've worked it out, now it's gonna stick a little bit more. So now if you play that modal scale exercise, you're gonna start to associate, okay, I'm playing the major scale, Ionian mode. All right, now I'm playing the scale formed in the second degree. It's the Dorian mode. It's gonna start to stick. But here's that classic exercise that I want to uh, expose you to. Step three. You'll want to play this next exercise. And this exercise, it's funny, I've been playing this for so many years and it didn't dawn on me until I was working with one of my uh, private one-on-one -on -one coaching students that, wow, this would be a great variation of the modal scale exercise. Now this exercise comes from the Clark Technical Studies for the Cornet. Very old book from mine. As you can see, the cover fell off, so there's no point in keeping this on. It's done, all right? If you're a saxophone player, you don't need to get this book, all right? What I'm trying to teach you in this video is to use your ears and figure it out by ear. It's gonna stick better for you. The exercise I'm referring to is from the Clark Technical Studies fifth study, okay? Now, let me play through what this exercise really is, and then I'm gonna take out the part that really applies to learning your chord scales and your modes. Now, you don't need to learn that entire exercise, but it would be a great one to learn to build up your technique. But I gotta ask you a question. What did you hear in that exercise that relates to the topic of chord scales and modes? Let me know in the comments below. If you said, it sounds like I went through all of the modes, you're right. It's just a different pattern. Check it out. <laughs> I just went through all seven modes. What I did not do was go all the way up and down each mode. So here's what I did, and this is a great variation of practice. I went up the scale that's formed on the first scale degree, 
I went then up one note to go down the scale that's formed on the second scale degree. Let me combine those together so you see what I'm talking about. I continue on. I go up the third scale degree, up that scale, then go up one note to go down the fourth scale degree. I go up the fifth scale degree, go up one note so I can go down the sixth scale degree. Finally, I go up the seventh scale degree and then I end on the one. Make sense? Let me know in the comments by typing in the word sense. Now that Clark Fifth study, every trumpet player uh, who's been playing a while should know it. And now other instruments will hopefully know it too. Now, is that the only way that you could practice your, you know, your mode, your chord scales? No. Why not start by going down the one, then up the two, then down the three and up the four? You could be as creative as you want to be. The more creativity that you put out there, the more you're going to really understand this concept, really grasp it, get it in your ears, your fingers, and you're going to understand the theory better. Okay, so I'm hoping that this video helped you a little bit more in terms of understanding chord scales and modes that are formed off of the major scale and gives you some stuff to work on to help build your technique, build your, uh, your fingerings, your coordination, and build your ears and understanding of, well, we'll call it music theory, but in practice, this is the stuff that we really use. It's not some highfalutin stuff. It's stuff that we actually use when we're improvising and uh, we're choosing the notes that we want to stress for particular chords that we see in a tune. Did you like this video? Give it a like. Tap that subscribe bell. And this way you will know when my new videos come out each and every week. Hey, thanks so much for joining me. On that note, take care. Have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.